okay? So even though it's not obvious, this, this, this equation here, this relationship, basically tells us how the energy, um, the allowed energy of the particle uh, relates to the K and alpha, which both depend on, um, with, well, K and alpha uh, contain, uh, depend on the energy E and the potential energy U naught, potential height U naught, and now we have, um, this is dependence on the length of the box, L, and so this basically gives us a relationship between um, uh, the size of the box and the and the depth of the well and the allowed energies E. Okay, so it's not obvious. It's really not obvious, uh, but this relationship actually is the energy quantization relationship. Now it turns out that this this relation is what we call a transcendental equation. Okay, and which means that it can't be solved algebraically by normal methods. Okay, just by kind of manipulating this and rearranging terms and so forth. Excuse me, can't be solved by algebraic methods. So you have to use a computational method, like you could in fact, for example, use, um, you could set up an Excel spreadsheet um, to relate uh, the K's, the E's, the L's, okay, um, and, and U naught, and, um, and uh, do it computationally. Or you could uh, use a graphical method, which gives, which, sh which is a little bit easier in this sense, the graphical method actually allows you to kind of see more of the physics, and so that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do. Now, this transcendental equation can be rewritten in a more useful form, and I'm not going to show how that um, is done explicitly, but if we, ex again, if we insert the expressions for alpha, k, and u naught, and we solve uh, this equation here, for u naught, what we find is that we actually get two solutions, um, which correspond to even n being even and n being odd. So when n is odd, one three five, that actually corresponds, if you remember, to even solutions of the wave function. That is, that they're symmetric with respect to the center of the box. Um, then we basically arrive at a solution. We can re we can write u naught um, uh, for these odd values of n, we can write uh, h bar squared k squared over 2m secant squared kl over 2, okay? And again, these are, these are, these, these are periodic, uh, sec the secant function is a periodic function, okay? And so uh, this equation is, val this relationship is valued, is, is valid when kl, okay, kl here, um, the, twice the argument of the secant is uh, between some integer value, odd integer value, n pi is less than n pi and greater than n minus 1 pi. So if n equals 1, we're talking about uh, this solution is valid or this, e this equation is valid from 0 to pi. Okay, when, when kl is between 0 and pi, if n equals 3, okay, then it's, then it's um, between 2 pi and 3 pi, etc. Now for the odd, for the odd values of n, we have uh, a similar solution. It's just that now we have the cosecant function, okay? And again, it's its value. It's 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 valid in periodic, in a periodic way. So when kl is again less than n pi greater than n minus one pi, but now the ends are even, okay? So this this the transcendental equation which I wrote on the previous view graph here, okay? Um, it's it's not trivial algebraically to get from there to here. But once uh, you get there, then we have something to work with because now what we can do is plot the left, the right-hand side of these equations, and that's what I've plotted here. Okay, so as a function of kl, okay, I'm plotting the energy, okay, and basically the solutions here: h bar squared k squared over 2m. This is units of energy, okay, and I'm plotting those solutions. The the Odd solutions, n equals 1, 3, 5, corresponding to the secant solutions are shown in red. The uh, even solutions, that is corresponding to n equals 2, 4, 6, are shown in green. Okay, and the so these red and these green lines correspond explicitly to these different solutions for these different periodic uh, ends.